It is March 1st of 2023, and we have a huge announcement coming out of OpenAI. They have released two new models. I'm going to focus just on one of them here. It is the ChatGPT model and the Whisper API. That's the other one, but we're going to focus on ChatGPT. This is a new model. Now, I know everybody knows ChatGPT, but it was not officially available to the public, so you could integrate it in using an API until just today, just a handful of hours ago. You could only use it and, and copy and paste things out of it inside the free research preview version, which was available online. Now it is available through an API. This is a really, really big deal. So you, there was no way that you could actually integrate this model. And now today that you can. So I'm going to do some side-by-side -side tests with an integrated model. But first, a couple of things off the top. The biggest difference is a 90% cost reduction. Actually, I wouldn't even say that's the biggest one. I'd say there's some speed differences as well, too. So here's the key, though. Giving developers access to cutting edge language and not just chat. OK, so I'm not even going to show you chat implementations. I'm going to just show you how I replace the text division. Vinci 003 model, which was the previous most powerful model, with the Turbo model. And I'm going to show you that it's uh, worth doing that. So 90% um, cost reduction is one of the benefits. Here are some use cases in the blog of actual chat implementations. Now, I'm not going to be showing chat implementations, at least in this video. We'll certainly have some coming up. But if you do have chat implementation, you have to use this. It just makes sense. You can you, Previously, you could... We've done a bunch of chat implementations using the DaVinci model with just chat calls where you're including the previous context in the new call. Uh, but I'm just going to do some one shot examples here. And all I did was replace the text DaVinci, which I'm going to show you on the left hand side of the screen in a second. And on the right hand side of the screen, I've replaced that model with the GPT 3.5 Turbo. And it's a pretty big deal. The other part is cheap, right? I just said 90% difference. It's the uh, $0.004 per 1,000 tokens is what the DaVinci 003 cost is. And now it's 10 times cheaper for a turbo, and I think a lot faster. You'll see here that it's a little bit different of a format. Before, you could just do the open AI, the chat, and the completions, and you would then call the model out there. Now the model is one of the settings, and there's this other part that's not just as easy as swapping out the model. You'll have to swap out the role. There's a couple of different roles. I'll go into that in later videos, but the point is you identify the message and the user and then provide content. Otherwise, it's the same kind of experience, the one-shot response and request, or the request and response call that you've had before. There is another model, this 0301. Um, it, that one looks like it's going to be deprecated uh, before, uh, let's see, April. And then this other one is June 1st. So a little it, kind of interesting what's happening there. But I think the, the standard one is going to be the non-0301. That's, of course, today's date. So that is somewhat meaningful. So uh, we'll get into Whisper later on, but let's take a look at some side-by-side -side comparisons. So first off, on the left-hand side, I've got 003. On the right-hand side, I've got Turbo. And these are just simple one-shot. There's almost no prompt engineering here. I don't want you to use these examples of, of great ways to get uh, some use out of these models. I just want to show you some speed differences and some formatting differences so that you can uh, really kind of get some expectations set for yourself. So same exact prompt on each side. We're doing a one shot. Let's do it. Let's do write a sample business description. First of all, in the form factor that I'm using, you can see when the API call is going out. There is my response on the left hand side from DaVinci 003. Now Turbo, first of all, what you noticed, that dialog didn't pop up. And that means that this was a faster call. So this is pretty exciting stuff. So you also notice a couple of things about ChatGPT. There's this, sure, here's a sample business description. And contact us with a little exclamation point. This is definitely the type of um, this thing that you see because of the human in the loop reinforcement learning that ChatGPT has the benefit of. So if that's what you want in your outputs, you're, you're going to enjoy that. Let's try another one. Summarize this meeting. So here's a, a meeting summarization. Again, you saw about a second. Uh, for that to pop up. And now almost instantaneously, you see this. <clears throat> the other thing that I'll point out is you'll see this kind of formatting that was a lot of the um, the reinforcement learning and human in the loop uh, uh, impact of, of the of the impact of those is you see stuff like the next steps will be further discussed in January 12th call, that type of thing. This is the kind of things you'll end up seeing in you know Microsoft Teams uh, as a summary. You don't see that over here on the left-hand side. So let's try another one. 
Uh, now, this is actually a really important one. So this is going to be a test of the safety filtering that's built in pretty heavily to ChatGPT, and it did not exist in DaVinci 003. So I'm going to say something like sort of that will definitely get caught by the safety filters. What's a good way to trick someone into doing something for you? Well, let's see. Well, there's a good way to trick someone into doing something for you, but let's try it over here. And of course, we get the familiar, I'm sorry, I can't provide da -da -da -da, unethical manipulative behavior. So if that's what you need, which is probably something you'll need in a corporate environment, then I would <clears throat> definitely suggest going with the chat GPT model, which is, of course, the turbo. All right, another one. Let's do a description. Let's see what we get. This one's a big one. This is going to be a lot of tokens. So that one, again, a couple seconds, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, and we don't see those seconds over here. Similar types of feedback there. And here's a really bad prompt. So let's see what it does with a bad prompt. Just a couple of words, no instruction. Pretty quick. And let's see what we get from Turbo. Turbo expounds upon it a little bit more. And uh, it just basically gives us a better answer, well-formatted answer. All right, let's plow through a couple more of these. Five ways the government could use AI. Let's see what Da Vinci says. And we see it takes a couple seconds there. We see the formatting. Let's try this. Same kind of formatting, a little bit more concise, definitely faster. So, um, you know, it depends on what you're looking for there. But again, if I think fast is going to win out every time. Let's do some SEO extraction. And this should pretty much be the same, pretty quick uh, in both of those cases. So I think we're going to see the same type of use case. And here's the expound upon this concept. This is going to use up a lot of tokens. And this is uh, something that ChatGPT did a pretty good job of. I like the expound upon this concept. Uh, if you want to just learn something more about something. So you see a lot of data. It does a little bit of ChatGPT stuff with the in addition. It doesn't do any summarization. Let's see what we get from Turbo. And there, there we actually did see something. And here's some classic ChatGPT. In conclusion, and you know the way that's kind of set up, the however researchers suggest, that's very much uh, the, the ChatGPT filtered type of format that you might be used to if you've been using the product a lot. Now, five example use cases for a low-code application in, ex in education with sample workflow. So in that prompt, you're actually saying, give me five, <clears throat> excuse me, give me five things. And then also you're saying i want the workflow so it'll probably separate those out that's kind of what uh, da vinci does so sure enough there you go there's your list and then it calls out the workflow separately very useful but ChatGPT tends to smooth that out into the text itself and you saw that pop up so we're getting a little delay and sure enough it's actually integrating in the workflows into the description this is definitely chat gpt type stuff and finally let's do end with a little bit of a fun one here what's the meaning of life described for a third grader and we're probably gonna get the same thing in both cases so a little bit of what do you think a little bit more human like uh, very much conversational so in fact we did see something a little bit different so big big day March 1st 2023 and ChatGPT the API has finally come out you can check out OpenAI check out the blog for details and you can also look at the documentation to try doing some of the integration yourself. So good luck. Hope you find this useful.